Hi everyone, this is Andrew Hoffman once again. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to build a modular ability system in Godot. Modular meaning that you can drag and drop, easily swap out abilities. This is going to be something akin to World of Warcraft's ability system where you can just have an enormous number of abilities. You can put them on an action bar, you can take them off, you can spec into them, modify them, you can choose not to, etc. So I'm going to teach you how to architect a system like that. Let's jump right into it. So as you can see, I'm using Godot version 3.42 stable, but this should apply to any version of Godot that's beyond version 3.0. So where do we start? As you can see, I have this little game that I've been working on. And this is a game I have just decided to throw together in my free time. And the idea is it's going to be a game where you potentially start as like a primitive uh, adventurer in this in this roguelike game and you start with magic and abilities and eventually you progress and become more technologically advanced and then you have a combination of both magic and technology so I thought that might be fun as a concept but that's beyond the scope of this video today we're talking about modular ability systems so if you've seen my past video I talked about how to organize your file structure in order to make an application modular. I talked about a modular approach or a hierarchical approach. This game uses a combination of the two. As you can see, we have kind of a hierarchical approach. However, the ability system, we want to be fully modular. That means each ability should be a totally contained unit. In other words, if we were to drag and drop this blink ability right here into any other game, provided it's using the same version of Godot, we should be able to use it out of the box. Same thing for this move ability right here. So when I say modular ability system, I really mean truly modular. How can we make an ability system that's so modular that we can let the characters swap out abilities, we can let enemies swap out abilities, characters and enemies can use the same abilities. That's actually quite difficult, so uh, pay attention. And you know what it came down to in the end was you know abilities have to be a, a system where they're both organized modularly and coded modularly so let's just dig into a little bit more so in this we have a player scene which is pretty simple there's a collision 2d there's a sprite it's just a square right now and the player has a script called player controller and the player controller inherits from an entity script I highly suggest doing this creating an entity script and making all of your players and NPCs inherit from that script because that way you don't have to do a lot of duplication in this case the entity has functionality like regen health regen mana modify mana aka a function to call when you cast a spell apply damage including handling uh, damage reduction via armor so first things first in this system is every single NPC in the game is going to inherit from entity and this is going to be the basis for what a living creature in the game has as far as functionality goes you also notice that there's a load ability function down here and this is an important part this is just a modular function that loads an ability based on the name and because it loads based on the name the file structure always has to have the name of the ability the same right here inside of the topmost folder as well as the main scene so all it does here is it says load, which means let's load this into memory, let's instance it, create a new copy of it, and then let's add it as a child to the current scene. And the current scene is, scene is an entity, which is great. So when, in this case, the player decides to implement an ability, then the player in this player controller right here can implement move or blink, and all they have to do is two lines of code. Furthermore, if you have an AI, all they'd have to do is two lines of code. So let's, let's start at the bottom. In order to implement a modular ability system, you want to have a base entity class from which all the bad guys and the good guys, including the player, inherit from. In this, you want to have a structure from which you can load any ability programmatically. Now, when you extend that using the extends keyword, the script will inherit all that functionality. And then we can go on to simply call load ability, load in these abilities. Well, that's you know one step in the right direction, but where do we go from there? So we load in these abilities, but we also need to be able to call the abilities in a very simple manner. And that's because otherwise we have to have a whole bunch of code. If you look at other examples of Godot games, you'll notice that when they call an ability, they actually inside of the parent class will set up the X and Y coordinates and a bunch of state. We don't want any state at all 
to be managed inside of the player class or an NPC class. Otherwise, we have to do a bunch of code replication and our ability system is no longer module. So right here, we check for an action, let's just say move up, and then we say move.execute self up. Well, what does this mean? Well, it turns out because the player is always gonna be an entity, passing self as a reference, although this isn't always the best practice, in this case, if we assume all living creatures are entities and we provide functionality to the entity.gd that can be passed downwards into the ability script, then if the ability has to do something like buff the player, it can always buff the player, and we don't have to do any state management in the player class itself. So let's take a look at this move ability. So over here, you'll notice that we have this ability here called move.gd. And it's very simple, you've seen it in my other tutorials. All it does is create a velocity, depending on what inputs are going in, and then it normalizes that velocity and allows the player to move by simply calling the move and slide, which is a child in kinematic body 2D. Now you'll notice move is not a kinematic body 2D, so it calls it on S, which is the parent. In other words, the structure here, once again, is that we create modular abilities, we pass through a reference to whoever's casting the ability, and then we pass through the parameters. You can see this as well with um, blink right here. So we have a blink ability, we pass through a reference to ourself, and in this case, Blink doesn't need any other parameters. So let's jump over to Move real quick. Move has a scene. The reason it has a scene is because there's some functionality I'm gonna to wanna to access on this node, okay? And when we're creating a modular system, even if we don't ac access that functionality, we have to create these nodes because other abilities might access node functionality. And if we had some abilities that were only scripts and some that were scripts and nodes, we'd have to have a much more complex loading system that would be like, okay, load ability, does this ability a script? Is it a node? Is it a combination of nodes? Instead, because nodes are combinations of, of scripts, or sorry, scenes are combinations of scripts and nodes, all we have to do is just have a single scene containing a node that contains a script, and that's the bare minimum for a modular ability. It'll make more sense uh, in a minute. So let's look over at Blink. So this Blink right here is an ability that's something akin to a teleportation I cooked up. So if we look at the Blink script, basically the player loads in Blink and Blink loads in a sub scene called Ghost, which is a kinematic body 2D. Now, because every ability is just a, a scene, these scenes can load in other scenes if needed. For example, this allows you to build systems like you would see in Neon Abyss, the roguelike, where you might have an ability, a, a bullet, for example, and when you shoot it, you can upgrade it to split into three and then split into three again, etc. Well, in this case, we could just load in whatever it splits into or the explosion inside of the ability, and the ability is still modular, so the player code has nothing to do with the abilities. It only passes through configuration information. Now let's look at this execute function right here. So this is pretty simple. We get a direction in which we want the character to blink in. We get a direction in which we want the ghost to look in. We start it and then we add a child. So we instance this ghost and the ghost is a sub scene. The sub scene has its own script and it basically just moves. And finally at the end of its movement, it will teleport the player. So let's, let's try this real quick. So the movement right here works as you'd expect. Now this ghost script, what happens when I click the key number one that corresponds with blink, sorry, blink, which contains the ghost subscene, it's gonna create a copy of the character that runs out. And then at the end of the timer, the character is gonna teleport over to that player. So this is kind of the combination of a teleport ability alongside uh, maybe like a shadow clone ability. So you create a shadow clone, you send it out to confuse, you know, in a multiplayer environment or an NPC environment, confuse the AI, the AI chase it, or they chase you, you go in the opposite direction, and then you teleport at the end to the position of the ghost. Yeah, so what's what's happening here from the very top is we have an entity. Entity has built-in functionality like load ability. We have a player or any other living creature, and the player reads inputs, just reads inputs and makes calls to abilities, which are loaded here. It doesn't handle any state whatsoever for these abilities. 
Now, if we go down to ability one, it says blink.execute self. So then we look at blink, we notice we've loaded in blink, so we go over here, and we have this execute function, and every single ability should have an execute function. That way you can programmatically add and remove abilities, and as long as they have an execute function, that's all that's needed in order for the ability to function. So we take this execute, we get the direction, we get the direction to look at, this is the direction that the, um, sorry, that the ghost will look at, so the shadow clone, and you know we set it up with a little bit of information right here, we just don't want to start it right on top of the player, so we instead start it just a couple units away from the player, and then we spawn in this ghost. Now ghost, right here, will later on inherit the same object as whoever's casting it, so it'll, it'll look identical, but for now, as you can see, what it does is it has a configuration script, which is called by blink, and then on every physics process it moves, and then finally what's going to happen is at the end of this it's going to teleport the player which we can reference by s right here to the position at which the ghost is at the same time that it despawns the ghost so once again this blink ability right there right there and we can apply this ability to any npc in the game because all it requires is a single function call right here and finally, even better than that, because the blink is entirely module, same with the move, we could just copy paste this file into another GD script game, another Godot game. We could copy paste this file into another Godot game, and voila, that ability will transfer 100% because every asset and piece of code required and piece of state required to execute is within the abilities folder. So that's my overview on the foundations of building a modular ability system. I think this is a really fascinating approach because if you can get the system modular enough, you can do a lot of amazing things. You can have abilities that spawn other abilities. You can have NPCs that use all the same abilities as you. You'll notice you almost never see that in a game because oftentimes the most complex abilities are given to the players and the player object has to maintain a lot of state about that ability. And using this system, it's actually possible to share abilities between both the players and the NPCs. So very interesting approach. And I hope that this was a beneficial video to you all. Thank you for watching. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing.